Hello everybody, I hope you can all see and hear me on this live stream. Yes, I'm live on YouTube, very exciting for me. I hope it's, hope it's good for you. Now this is gonna be a moderated live show, so all the comments and questions are suitable for all audiences. So please make sure nobody don't put, in, put up anything that's either rude or profane or vulgar. Yes, that's an important message for those of you who are sending us messages. And I'm going to be answering questions and doing shout outs, maybe telling some jokes and my poems, as well as some of yours, because you've been sending me some stuff uh, for the last two or three weeks, which is fantastic. And if you miss the chance to send in a request beforehand, you can get a hello or shout out if you use Super Chat today. So there's some people coming up there. Um, I can see some names coming up, can you? Angus Rhodes, there we are, hello. Um, Ashitan Play says hello. So there's lots of people coming up on Super Chat. And along the way, there'll be some news. Yeah, I got some news and updates. I feel quite newsy anyway with this computer here. I feel a bit like a sort of newscaster. Um, so I'll be some, there'll be some updates about what I've got coming up on the channel, my new books, and some upcoming performances as well. So there'll be lots of stuff like that. Anyway, that's wonderful. Now, if you tuned into the last live stream in July, you'll know that as well as doing shout outs, chatting, and doing odd little performance bits, I do like reading out your jokes and poems and stories. So this time um, I suggested a theme. I suggested a theme. So it could be around my poem, Hot Food, that I think some of you know as nice. Uh, you've seen it as a meme maybe, but the whole poem is hot food. And also about my down behind the dustbin poems. You may know that one that goes, down behind the dustbin, I met a, I met a dog called Jim. He didn't know me and I didn't know him, that's it. Yeah, I sometimes forget the last word, it's quite tricky. So let's see what we've got for you today and we'll get started with some of your questions. So our first shout out of the day goes to year one from Gildon Sutton Primary School in Chester and their teacher is Mrs. Williams. So I'm gonna give you a wave, that's lovely. And uh, you say, we'll be listening intently to your podcast on the 24th and would love a shout out. Well, there you are, you've had it. So year one, I hope you're having a nice time. Very good. Um, and uh, so let's have a little look here. Ah, somebody called, I think, Bents Barner has sent in a poem and it's a poem. Ha! Oh, I love this. It's a poem about <laughs> two sandwiches talking. Oh, I wish I'd thought of that. That's a brilliant idea. Here we go. Two sandwiches were sitting on a table. One was bread and the other was bagel. They talked about sandwich etiquette then they saw a cheese baguette. What's the matter? asked the bread. Nothing, the bagel responded. She looks nice, said the bread. She looks like someone who I've met. Well, talk to her, it's very easy. I remember that she's so cheesy. I won't talk to her, said the bread, because we're all sandwiches. While every one of us can talk, no sandwich can ever walk. Well, <laughs> that's brilliant, what a great idea. A sandwich talking to a bagel. I'd never have thought of that. Of course, that's the great thing about writing, is it doesn't have to be real. You know, you can, you can have things that aren't, aren't alive and they can talk to each other. I once went out with some children by the River Thames here in London, and uh, we did a poem where that great big London Eye, you know, spoke to the River Thames. And the River Thames spoke to the London Eye, saying why it was jealous, why they were jealous of each other. Because, you know, the River Thames said to the London Eye, it's all very well for you, you turn round all day. And the London Eye looked down, said to the River Thames, God, oh, I wish I could go sailing out to sea and things like that. So you could do that about anything, any object at all. You could do a conversation between my glasses and um, my nose. Why not? So we've got another shout out now. This is from Ibrahim Davis Morris, who's from Indianapolis in Indiana. Wow, that's such a long time away. I think it may be the middle of the night for you there, mightn't it? And you say, me and my best friend love your stories, stories, and I was wondering if you could give a shout out to my friend Paige Brown on her birthday, September the 23rd. So there we are, we've said hello to Paige and we've said hello to Ibrahim, which is wonderful. And then we've got a shout out to Chris from Texas. I have a question to ask you. How do you go about getting an editor or publisher when you don't have any money for one? I'm in need of getting my short stories published, edited, the whole works. Can you give me some advice? Well, you're in Texas, Chris. The way to get stories published, you have to find somebody, a special person 
and they're called this in America as well as Britain, they're called an agent. Yes, you have to find that person. Now in Britain here, if anybody's listening and watching in Britain, if you want to get your stories published, you can go to the library and find a book called Children's Writers and Artists Yearbook. And when you look in there, it's got a long list of agents, people who, who can help you get published. In America and in other countries, you'll have something very similar published by your book people, which has a list of all the agents. So that's how you have to start with that. Now, let's see um, who we got here. Is anyone giving me any messages? Um, let's have a look. Can you give a shout out to Reuben and Sean? That comes from somebody called something like Nye2. And audiobooks for kids say, hi, Michael. That's very kind. Yes, there are. You've had a shout out. And uh, yeah, so there we are. We've got these are coming up. So I'm saying hello to you. Now, Jade and Phil Potts are sent in a joke. Here's my joke. Today at the bank, a lady told me to check her balance. So I pushed her over. There you go. That's not bad, is it? That's quite a good one. Hello, Mr. Rosen. My name is Mark Mason, but you may call me Mark. That's very kind of you, Mark. I've made a poem taking inspiration from you, but first I have one question. What is your favourite that you had to perform? Hmm. So what you, I think you maybe mean my favourite poem or story. Well, I suppose I like that one that begins, we had a teacher who was so strict, we weren't allowed to breathe in her lesson. She used to stand out front and say, no breathing. We had to get through from the time we first came to school till morning play, like this. And the weak ones just used to keel over. Kaboom, kaboom, kaboom. And there was always a whiny kid going, me, can we go out and do some breathing? And she'd say, no, you've got all playtime to do it in. And they'd go, I'm gone, me, I'm gone, I'm gone. Well, that one, I really do enjoy performing that one. And I was in a school the other day. Hello, Exmouth. Uh, community college if you're there I was there and I was talking to 500 year sevens and uh, they uh, they uh, they got me to do that one and they all joined in and it was great it was wonderful just seeing all those people joining in going no breathing and then <gasps> mm. let's have a look now and see what else we've got uh, I could be yeah so it would mean a lot if you could answer this question and look at this poem I made called TikTok. And this is like a sort of, well, it's not exactly a rap, but I can see it's sort of like a, it goes tick tock, look at the clock, tick tock, it never stops, tick tock, look at the clock, tick tock, it's 12 o'clock, tick tock, look at the clock, tick tock, it's time to jog, tick tock, look at the clock, tick tock, it's 10 o'clock, tick tock, look at the clock, tick tock, it's time to stop, tick tock, look at the clock, tick tock, it's 8 o'clock, tick tock, look at the clock, tick tock, it's time to hop, tick tock, look at the clock, tick tock, it's 6 o'clock, tick tock, look at the clock, tick tock, we never stop, tick tock, look at the clock, tick tock, it's 4 o'clock, tick tock, look at the clock, tick tock, we need to jog. Tick tock, look at the clock. Tick tock, it's two o'clock. Tick tock, look at the clock. Tick tock, we made it back to the shop. Tick tock, and we never stopped. I quite like that. That's a good idea, isn't it? Where you use a sound like tick tock, and then you build your poem round it because it gives you the rhythm. And in fact, if you were doing that, say, with a group of you, what you could have is everybody in the group going tick tock, tick tock, tick tock, like that. And then you could say the poem over the top. Because with your words that you make, you can make a rhythm, just like you have dub and bass or rhythm and bass you have in bands and in jazz. And you can take someone's name or you can take a sound and you can make poems over the top. So if you take my name or your name, you see, I can go, Michael Rosen, Michael Rosen, Michael Rosen. And that's like going, you see, Michael Rosen, Michael Rosen. It's the on beat, Michael, and that's the off beat. So if you're playing a drum, it's bam, Michael Rosen, and then you can make a poem that goes over the top of it. Um, uh, he's got hair on his head, Michael Rosen. He's wearing glasses, Michael. See, like that? And you can do that So with TikTok. That's lovely. Thanks ever so much for sending that in. So now we've got some news. Here we've got some news. So I've got some new books out. Okay, I hope you're going to see in a minute that I've got one called Uncle Gob and the Plot Plot. And I've got it here. And you should be able to be seeing that on the screen now. At least I hope so. Dave, have we got that on the screen? Dave's got it. Put it on the screen. That's lovely. So that's out now. It's available at bookshops and libraries. And this is the third book. My third book. 
in the Uncle Gob series, and it's got illustrations by the brilliant, brilliant Neil Layton. And I've got a little profile of Neil Layton that I've put in this book at the end. Let's see. Neil started drawing, painting and writing a long time ago. Not as long ago as the Romans or the Saxons or the Normans. The Romans, Saxons, Normans wore helmets. Neil does not wear a helmet, not even when he's drawing, painting and writing. You could say that Neil is an artist. You could also say that because he draws, he's a drawer. The trouble with saying that though is that you might think he's someone who lives in a chest of drawers. Neil does have a chest, but that doesn't mean that he's a chest of drawers. So that's quite nice about Neil. It's so I did a profile of me as well for this book. Michael was born and brought up in a flat, but that didn't make him flat. He is not flat. He now lives in a house that isn't a flat, and the house isn't flat either. In fact, so far, nothing in this profile of Michael Rosen is flat. Now here comes a flat bit. When Michael sings, he often sings flat. That means singing a tiny bit too low, like you, are, like you want to go for a walk under the sofa, but it's too low. Michael has never walked under a sofa. So there's a helpful profiles in the back of the book. I don't know whether you can, you can see that. Yeah, um, and there'll be a taster of the latest Uncle Gob book released on the channel, on our channel, very soon. So that's Kids, Poems and Stories with Michael Rosen. There'll be a, a, a taster of it. I'll be reading the first three chapters of Uncle Gob and the Plot Plot. So please look out for that. Now we've got uh, more book news. We've got another new book coming out. And this one's called Unexpected Twist. Yeah, it's called Unexpected Twist. And this one's illustrated by the great, the wonderful Tony Ross. You may have seen his pictures with the David Walliams books. And it's my modern take on the classic story of Oliver Twist by Charles Dickens. So it's I've told another story and you can read a bit of Oliver Twist. All right. And at the same time, a brand new story about a girl called Shona. So what's that got to do with Oliver Twist? Well, think about this. Any story that you ever know, you, what you can do is just change it a bit and write your own story. You can change when it was. You can change the main character from a boy to a girl, from a girl to a boy. If you've got parents, you could maybe make them the children and make the children the parents. Or you could make it so the story's in the future. Or you could turn it all into aliens. So you could take any famous story. I don't know what stories you like. It could be a Roald Dahl story or a famous story from before, like Robinson Crusoe or something like that. And then you make up your own stories. Have you ever seen the film The Martian with Matt Damon? You know what story that is? Robinson Crusoe. Think about it. Great. OK, so again, um, that book, there it is, uh, Unexpected Twist. That's available now in bookshops and libraries. And another book that's coming out uh, very, very soon is my book called Hampstead the Hamster. <laughs> there it is, Hampstead the Hamster. I don't know if you can see that. And this one is illustrated again by the wonderful Tony Ross. There we go. So Hampstead the Hamster. And that begins, more than anything else in the world, Leo wanted a hamster. He knew that a hamster would make him happier than a fried egg. What? Fried eggs aren't happy. Ah, but Leo always thought that fried eggs are happy. So there we are. That's Hampstead the hamster, and that's coming out very soon. So now, uh, back to some comments from you guys, because over on YouTube, we've had messages and comments too. So Wolf EZ or Wolf EZ says, Tell the story on how you went to the moon with me. I'm sorry. Wolf Easy says, tell, or Wolf EZ, whichever it is, if he's from America, it's easy. Tell the story on how you went to the moon with me. Well, yes, that's right. I remember this very well. Uh, Wolf uh, came over my place and he said, can we go to the moon? And I said, yeah, because I've got a really good chair. And this chair's got like little rockets instead of the legs. They're made of like some special kind of high octane fuel and rockets. And then um, we, he, there was one for him, one for me. And we went, let's go to the moon, Wolf. And away we went. Um, we shot through the glass bit in the back of my house. So we smashed that, which was a shame, really, because it cost quite a lot of money to put in. <laughs> like that. And we went flying through the moon. And as we were flying, we saw all sorts of various other things. I mean, it was fine. You know, Wolf is obviously a wolf. We saw a few foxes few aliens, uh, one or two other people going 
nice on the way and then we landed on the moon and it's not made of cheese uh, this is the incredible thing um, it's made of banana spread it's mixed up mashed banana is what the moon is made of and um, we ate some of that and we're still there so that's what happened when me and wolf went to the moon thanks for asking so here we've now got pika scar alt says i sent an email hope i get picked but probably won't you know when i saw that First, I thought that said pickled, but it doesn't, does it? Hope I get picked, but probably won't. But you have been. So there we are. Pika Scar Alt, that was. Nikki Foggy says, Hi, can you give me a shout out? I'm called Jessica Hilda. Now that's quite muddling, because one minute you're Nikki Foggy and the next minute you're Jessica Hilda. Are you two people? We'll find out. Sam Ferreter says, What inspired you to make this channel? Do you know what it was? I have a son called Joe. And Joe filmed me once going, chum, 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 chum. We're going on a bear hunt. We're going to catch a big one. You know that thing. Well, that's what I was doing. And then he said, well, why don't you do some more poems? And one of my books you couldn't buy in the shops anymore called The Hypnotizer. And so he had the idea that what we could do is make a whole set of videos of the poems from that book. But it was really Joe's idea. And so he found an old warehouse. And so all those first videos, you've, you've seen them. There's Hot Food and some others there. Um, Laura singing, have you seen that one? I think Laura's over there, actually. Yeah, it is, she's not actually singing, but the same Laura who does Laura singing from The Hypnotizer. Yeah, um, so uh, that, that book, uh, I did those, and that was really Joe's idea. So it's thanks to Joe, Sam. Now, let's have a look and see what we've got. Ah, Asthathan Place says that he can do the tongue click. He says he can do the sound. I wonder, do you think he can? I keep meeting people who do the thing where you, you make a kind of sound off the top of the roof of your mouth, but I do it like that. It's different. Oh, yes. Now, let's see who else we've got. Um... Tell the story of how you defeated my cousin, the Dalek King. Well, that's quite an interesting idea. Yes. Do you know about Daleks? Maybe some of you in America, if you're watching this, you won't know. They're, they're like little alien things that go about in a TV series we have over here called Doctor Who. And they go, exterminate, exterminate. But I don't think anyone's ever exterminated them. So anyway, uh, scratch whoever's says, hi, Michael, can you please give a shout out to Nacho, Alvaro and Jose from Spain? Well, now I have, and I hope I've pronounced those names right. I'm not very good at Spanish. In fact, I'm, I haven't really learned anything at all, I'm afraid. I'd, I've learned some French, but I haven't really learned uh, any Spanish. And when I see the word Nacho, the first thing I think about are those things, which is not really very helpful, is it? Uh, audiobooks for Kids says, I want Mr. Rosen to be my grandpa. I'm sorry, that's not possible. But I'm already a step-grandpa, and very soon I'm going to be a grandpa-grandpa, or as you'd say in Yiddish, which was the language that my mum and dad could speak, I'm going to be a Zayda. In America, I think you say a Zaydi. Well, I'm going to be a Zayda, fancy that. Zayda Michael, or Zayda Mick, as some people call me. Very good. And uh, Chloen... Tropeur 69, if you're French, Cloen Tropeur 69. Hi, Michael, tell us your favourite type of cheese. Well, I think that's probably Le Roquefort. Yes, lovely. And Zoe Zelayana says, hello, greetings from the Netherlands. Lovely. Well, that's all from Super Chat for the time being, but keep them coming. And let's have a look and see what else. Belle Ha is an English teacher at a Korean elementary school in a fairly rural area. Are you maybe planning a worldwide tour? I'm, I'm not, I'm afraid, Belhar, no. Uh, for a worldwide tour, people would have to ask me. They'd have to ask me uh, whether, whether I'd, I'd want to come and visit their country. I have been asked to Australia, uh, but I can't do that. And you say, because I think you're amazing, that's very kind of you, Belhar, and my students would benefit greatly from your performance. Some of my students know your book and love every sentence of it. The sixth and fifth graders are actually doing a book performance of one of your We're Going on a Bear Hunt. 
In case a world tour is part of your busy schedule, it would be greatly appreciated if you consider Korea. Ha ha, she says. Or he, yes, she says. I hope you have a blast for your promo. That's very, very kind. Well, you know, if anybody wants to ask me, if there's anybody in Korea who says, Michael Rosen, come out here, um, you might have, somebody might have to pay for my aeroplane fare, my airplane fare. But anyway, uh, it's possible. Andy Harry says, please, could you give a shout out to Harry Tozer on your live stream? It would be very much appreciated. There we are. It's been done. Harry Tozer. Jimmy Soto says, I've loved hearing your poem since I discovered you in late 2016. Wow, that long time ago. As I've seen some of your older poems, my favourites are Conversations with a Two-Year-Old. Yep, that's up there. Do you know who that two-year-old was? I have a funny feeling that was Laura. I have a funny feeling it was either Laura or her brother. So that's, those were true conversations that I put in the book. And Jimmy Soto says he also likes strict, which is once again, no breathing. Exactly. I would like it if you could recite either strict or conversations with a two year old during your next live web chat. Well, we did quite a chunk of strict. Um, we did that before, didn't we? So I hope that's all right for you. So thanks uh, from America, says Jimmy Soto. And Mr. Builder has sent in some jokes. Here we go. What did the blanket say to the bed? You got any thoughts on that? What did the blanket say to the bed? It said, I've got you covered. <laughs> well, it would, wouldn't it? How'd you find a princess? Yeah, no? You follow the footprints. Got it? Follow the footprints. Yes? Prince. No, anyway, that's all right. What do you call a book that's about the brain? A mind reader. These are good. Well done, Mr. Builder. I like that. I might steal one of them. I might steal that one. How do you find a princess? You follow the footprints. You with that one? You, you all got that one? Yeah, prince. Yeah. Anyway, lovely. Good. Now for some more YouTube comments. Uh, Gaming with O says, read out my name. Orla. Yes, indeed. Orla. There we are. We've read it out. Killer Machine says, it's my birthday on the 25th. Wait. No, I have school that day. Oh, dear. What a shame. Eggs for Day says, Michael, you remind me of my gramps. Uh, <laughs> gramps. Yeah, we, we, we don't usually say gramps in England, do we? Do we say gramps? Do we say gramps there, Matt? No, no. Cameraman Matt says no. Gramps. Do we say gramps? Do you, do you say gramps, Dave? Oh, we do. Dave says yes. Right. So there we are. Gramps. We do say gramps. I know about cramps, but not gramps. Uh, Rachel Sarchet, or maybe Sarchet, if it's French, Please, I'm early. Could I have a shout out? Well, if you're French, I'll say bonjour, uh, Rachel Sarchet. And the pretzel boy. Do you like pretzels, pretzel boy? They're quite nice, aren't they? Do you like the salty ones or the sugary ones? Yeah. Michael, it would mean the world to me if you gave me a shout out. It would mean so much. And then Soccerboss687 says, can we see you, brother? Um, I don't know. Can we see me? Can I? I can't see me. Um, I can only see a camera. See, right there is this big camera, and it's on what's called a tripod, three legs, just like they got in War of the Worlds. Have you, seen, have you ever seen? Have you seen that Tom Cruise uh, War of the Worlds and those big tripods? Yeah. Well, that's what's sitting in front of me—a tripod. And Matt looks a bit like Tom Cruise. Um, he's nodding. Yeah, he's a mod modest guy. Yeah. And so, uh, th what's going on here is like a mini War of the Worlds movie. So there's the camera. So I can't see you, but the camera can see me. That's that's magic. And then we've got A Y Y L M A O um, says, can you please spend more time reading the comments on your live stream? Thanks. Oh, right. OK, what have we got? Um, <laughs> Yang's right arm says, who's modding the chat? My bets on Dave. Well, you might have to bet about that. It might be Dave. It might be Laura. Or it might be Matt. Who is it? Hmm, I'm not going to tell you. Um, who else? Uh, let's see now. Uh, AM Vlog says, Hi, can you shout out me and my friend Jace? Mad Moths says, Michael, can I get a shout out? So I'm doing my best here. Uh, Paul Max says, please say hello to Queen's Park Primary. Yes, hello, Queen's Park Primary. I visited you, haven't I? Yes, if, it's, if it is the same, maybe several Queen's Parks around. 
Um, yes, well, if it is the same, hi, because we've done the university, haven't we? The Westminster University thing. I hope you're the same ones. Very good. And uh, who else? Of, uh, let's have a look. Jade Philpotts, I think we've already talked, haven't we? Or Jade, maybe, ah, maybe I got your name wrong. Maybe it's Jade. Um, so, um, Hangsterman Entertainment says, do you play video games, Michael? I don't. A long time ago, I used to play something called Tekken 3. That was about, oh dear me, 25 years ago with uh, my late son, the son, my son who died, I think maybe you know about him, Eddie. And uh, we used to play Tekken 3. And uh, do you know what? When I play video games, I get travel sick. You know that feeling you get when you're dry, you're in the back of the car and whoever's mum and dad's driving and as you go swerving about and you start to feel all kind of a bit ooh, ooh, like that or you get a funny feeling in the back of your neck. Well, when I play video games, I get exactly the same feeling. So, I don't know, it's a bit odd. I know Matt's looking at me like, you know, there's something wrong with me. I don't know, I just get travel sick, Matt, I'm sorry. Well, anyway, there you go. And Alien Child says, hi, Michael, how are you today? I'm fine. And do you know, Laura brought me a very nice bean wrap just before we came on air. And do you know, it was incredibly nice. I think it had butternut squash in it. Did it have butternut squash in it? It did. Laura says yes. So it was really nice. So I'm feeling really good. She said, if you don't have something to eat before you come on air, you'll feel bad. So that was very thoughtful of her, wasn't it? It was very nice. Um, and Pink Unicorn says, good day from, la from, he says, good day from the land down under. Well, that's very nice of you. That's very nice, Pink Unicorns. Thank you. And you're telling me about all sorts of games. Racer Ryan 86 says, do you still talk to Harry Bow? Now, some of you will know about Harry Bow from my poems and stories. Harry Bow, very, very sad story with Harry Bow. I'm afraid he died. He died when he was 17. And I only found out when many years later, I went back to my old school and I met a parent who was in fact the same age as me. I was in my thirties. And they, I said, do you ever see Harry Bow? And this guy, whose name was Jimmy, he said, well, no, he died when he was 17. Why didn't I know? Because we went to different schools. So I never knew. I went to a school called Harrow Weald. He went to a school called Headstone Lane. And I never knew. And I'd moved away from that area as well. So I never knew. I wrote about it. It's in my book called You Wait Till I'm Older Than You. Do you know why it's called that? Because Laura's brother, Isaac, we were having a fight. And he was about three and I was about 40. And I was winning. Like you might do, you know, if you fight with a three-year-old and you're 40, you might win. He got really, really angry with me, okay? And he stood up and he said, you wait till I'm older than you. And then he tried to think of something really horrible to say to me. So he said, you, 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 bear poo. That's what he called me. His own father, his own dad, he called bear poo. How bad is that, eh? Anyway, so um, that's, that's what happened there. So now let's have a look, see who else we've got. We got a shout out to Kai Robinson. He would like to know, how old are you? By the way, I'm 13 years old. Well, Kai, the honest truth is I was born in 1946. So that makes me 72. But when I go into schools, I tell a bit of a fib and I say that I was born in the Stone Age and I'm 3,072 years old. And of course, in the Stone Age, we didn't have things like this, you know, in a chair like that. We just sat on a rock. You know, we didn't have, everything was like made of stone. Rock, you know, we just sat on a, a rock at home. I go, mom, it's really uncomfortable. My bum hurts. And she'd say, shush, it's not the chair age yet. And I said, the, the table was just like an old rock as well, you see. And I say, mom, mom, it's really horrible. Shush, it's not the table age yet. And then all we had was like rocks and stones and stuff. I went, ah, oh, it really hurt your tooth, you know. Mom, I don't like this. She'd say, shush, eat your gravel. And then we didn't have a TV, didn't have television, just a rock in the corner of the room, sat staring at the rock. Like that, that's all we had, just staring at a rock. And then we'd say, what's on the rock tonight, mum? And mum had a really bad joke this. She'd go out, get another rock, put it on top of the rock and say, the rock's on the rock. It's not very funny, mum, not very funny. Go to school, exactly the same thing. You sat on a, on a rock 
And then in front of you, yeah, just no desk or table or anything, just a rock. Miss used to say, take out your rock. Yeah, so you take out a rock, you say, write on your rock. And you had like a little stone and you go, hoo, hoo. We couldn't speak, you see, in the Stone Age. Hoo, hoo, like that. Miss, can I go out and do some breathing? You see, that's where it all started. Because in the Stone Age, you weren't allowed to breathe in lessons. So anyway, that's, that's all true, that. Well, nearly. Okay, so Molly, aged eight in North Yorkshire, says, have you ever done any of your own illustrations or drawings for your own written works? Not really, because you see, Molly, I'm not very good at drawing. This is the only drawing I can do. It's, I bet all of you are better at drawing than I am. I'm going to show this to Matt, the cameraman, in a minute. I don't know whether he's going to be able to zoom in to see it. Okay, so look, Matt, can you see that if I hold it there? And that's an example of my incredible skills in painting and drawing. Have you got it there, Matt? Have you lined it up? Yeah. Yeah, there we go. So that's me. That's my picture of me. So um, as you can see, I'm never, I'm not really good enough for people to ask, <laughs> to ask me to do pictures in books. And then, ah, Molly says, uh, aged eight in North Yorkshire, why did the jelly wobble? Hmm? Because it saw the milkshake. Because it saw the milkshake. Good, lovely. Hi, we've got another one. My name is Yesin. I wonder when you started your YouTube channel. I got onto your channel when you became a meme. Right, um, when did we start our YouTube channel? I think we did the bear hunt, the very first one. That's about... 10 years old, I think. I'm not sure. I think so. And then we started the channel a wee bit later uh, when we started doing my book called The Hypnotizer. So I think that's about seven or eight years old. All right. And um, you got on when I became a meme. Well, it is a bit scary, that meme thing, to think that, I don't know, the pe people all over the world just know me as the person who goes, oh, nice. Just from that, just that little ka -chung. And it's, I think it's been seen by something like 10 million people. Do you know, when I go on a bus or I'm on the train, I can hear people on the other part of the carriage or the other part of the bus going, oh, nice, from the other side. I look round and I can't necessarily see who it is. And there are people come up to me and they say, <laughs> will you do the, you know, will you, do, will you just do it? You know, will you do it? And do you know, there was a guy, he actually stopped his car in the middle of the road to get me to do it. I, you know, he just stopped, there was traffic piling up behind him. He said, go on, do it, do it. He didn't have to even have to say what, right? He just, he just said, do it. So there you go. Now, who else we got? Alexandre says, you're always entertaining in whatever video I see you in. That's very kind of you, Alexandre or Alexandre. A lot of your performance seem mostly improvised. How do you manage to stay so upbeat, energetic and creative on the spot? I find myself exhausted most of the time. Thank you for making me laugh so much. Oh, well, what a lovely letter, Alexandre. Improvised. Hmm. I kind of improvise them by going into schools and performing them. And then I, it's called like you freeze the improvisation. You, you keep it. Jazz musicians do this, you know. They, they make up a little tune when they're gigging together, when they're jamming together. Yeah. And then they try and remember it or they record it and then they make that part of their compositions. Well, it's a little bit like that with me. I'll make up something when I'm in a school and then think, oh, I remember that. And then I might write it down and then it sort of becomes a performance piece. And then how do I manage to stay so upbeat, energetic and creative on the spot? Well, one way is if Laura gives me butternuts, butternut, I'm not about to say butternut scotch, but I don't think it is. That's, that's butternut squash. I'll get this right. There's, there's, what's that stuff called? Butterscotch. That's it. But it wasn't. That's what you gave me. Butterscotch is not the same as butternut squash. Butterscotch is that sweet, isn't it? Yeah. Good. Got that right. So butternut squash wrap. That would make quite a good rhythm, actually. Butternut squash wrap. Butternut squash wrap. You see, phrases like that. They become things that you can use. And you say, well, how do you, how do you manage? Well, it's like that. I eat good fresh fruit, food, fruit, food, fruit, food, food, foody fruit, all that. And I'm sorry you find yourself exhausted, Alexandra. 
Um, maybe have some butternut squash wrap as well. Did I say that? I did say that all right, didn't I? Good. Oliver says, big fan of yours. Thought I'd leave you a little joke. How do you make a tissue dance? Put a little boogie into it. Have I got... Anyone explain that joke? No? What? Bogey. How do you make a tissue dance? Put a little boogie into it. Bogey into it. Oh, I see. <laughs> Hope it's not too inappropriate. Well, it is. It's really inappropriate. And I'm really sorry I said it. I'd also really appreciate it if you could shout out Leafy on Twitch. So Leafy, who's spelt L-E-I-F-E-H. So there we are. I've done that. And then Simon from the Czech Republic says... Thank you for writing and performing your wonderful poems and stories. Last year I performed hot food. There it is again. Yes, we sit down to eat and the potato's a bit hot. So I only put a little bit on my fork and I blow till it's cool. Just cool into the mouth. Nice. There it is again. Uh, on an English competition where students say poems or sing. And guess what? Says Simon, I finished first in my category. Not only that, I also got the audience's award since that year they were allowed to vote. And that's all thanks to you. Well, thank you, Simon. Everyone was laughing when I got to the tongue clicking part. Yeah. I'm very glad that you're still performing to this day. Yeah, you know, I am still performing. I haven't given up yet, mate. Never stop. Now for some more news. Did you know that as well as my poems, I've also formed series of some of my longer books? on YouTube. They're available to view on the channel now. So if you haven't seen it already, we've got a book of mine which is called Your Thinking About Donuts available to watch. There we go. And are we watching that? A little bit of that? No, it's just a thing. It's just a thumbnail. Right, very good. And another story that's already up to enjoy. Ah, this is one of my favourites. This is Till Owlyglass. Till Owlyglass. Yep. And oh, did I miss a page? Oh, I did, didn't I? Yeah, I missed a page. I'll come back to that. Don't worry. Oh, I promise. OK, and uh, so another story that's already up to enjoy is Till Owlyglass. That's based on a German story called Till Eulenspiegel. And here, if it's ready now, Dave, is a little taster from Till Owlyglass. A long time ago, when I was young, I went to stay in Germany with my mum and dad and brother. Mum and Dad were very busy in the mornings, working. So me and my brother were often left on our own until dinner time. Most of the time we had to stay in our room and play or read. After a while, as I'm sure you can imagine, we got bored. And you know what happens when children get bored? They get into trouble. And that's just what happened to us. There was the time we climbed out of the window onto the roof and dropped bits of bread on the heads of the people walking along below. There was the time we did pretend flying and my brother did his pretend flying off the end of the bed and landed on his face. And there was the time we played football with my dad's shoes and one of the shoes went flying out the window. We got into so much trouble, my mum and dad just didn't know hi, what to do. Hi, right, hi again. In and the end, if you enjoyed somewhere. that, all right, you might be interested to know that we've just finished recording a sequel to your thinking about donuts. Uh, we've recorded your thinking about tomatoes. So we've got donuts and then tomatoes. So that's two whole books. So stand by for tomatoes. So keep your eyes peeled for that. It's going to be released on the channel very soon. We keep them coming. Uh, so, you know, quite recently we put up some of uh, Jelly Boots, Smelly Boots. We might come back to that in a minute. Raoul from Rotterdam says, I live in the Netherlands and I'm 11 years old. Hello, Raoul. Me and my brother really like your hot food video. It does seem to be the favourite. It makes us laugh really loud. Did you make this story up or did it really happen? I can tell you it really happened. My dad... We would have soup or potato or anything like that. And we would all be blowing on it, going like this. And then my dad, he'd take a great big chunk or a great big spoonful. Oh, oh, it's really hot. It's really hot. Watch out, everybody. It's really hot. And we go, well, we know that. We've just been blowing on it for the last five minutes. So I don't know. My dad, it was like that. He just thought he had to kind of 
tell us about that. Anyway, so there we go. Uh, I have some questions for you. Do you have a pet? Oh dear. Oh dear, oh dear. We had two cats. One was called Tony, the other was called Benny, and they were lovely guys, lovely brothers. They were what we call in England a ginger cat or a marmalade cat, they were. And they were very, very nice and very fond of each other. And then Benny died and Tony was lonely. Tony wandered round the house going, Rawr. It was, it was strange actually, because he used to meow. He'd go meow, like most cats. And the moment Benny died, he got this new kind of meow. He kind of went Rawr. And I used to think he sang, where's Benny? Rawr. He would be halfway through eating, right? So he'd have something to eat. And then he'd look up in the middle of it. And then turn round, go to the entrance of the kitchen and go Rawr. I think he was looking for Benny because when they ate, they used to try and eat each other's food. They each had a bowl next to it, next to each other like that, you see. And then Tony would eat there and Benny would eat there and then Tony would go, oh, yours looks nice. And he'd go over to Benny's and then Benny would go, oh, yours looks nice. And they'd end up eating each other's. Well, and then he used to fight a bit. And then when Benny died, Tony had no one to fight over with the food. So he got, where are you, Benny? Where? And then I'm afraid Tony got very, it was getting older and older and, oh dear, you saw this, didn't you, Laura? Uh, Tony's back legs didn't work very well. So his front legs worked and his back legs didn't. So it wasn't long after that, I'm afraid Tony passed away. So, um, but we've got their ashes. Yes, we've got their ashes. We've got Tony and Benny and in a little uh, sort of ginger, <laughs> sounds a bit funny really, but anyway, th there's a little orange, dolls, sort of cat dolls they are really, they're sort of like a model of a cat and their ashes are going to be in them. So anyway, so we remember Tony and Benny, we're very, very fond of them. So you've asked about pets. What is your favourite colour? I like the colour, in fact I'm not wearing any today, you know the colour of jeans when they get a bit faded? It's sort of like a faded blue, I think that's my favourite colour. No, no mate, not yours. Ah, yeah, no, Laura's got a sort of all-in-one thing. I don't even know what they're called, Laura, but anyway, the thing she's got, it's sort of like an American all-in-one denim thing. That's my colour. What kind of music do you like? Well, I suppose my favourite, favourite music is the blues, uh, particularly when it's electric guitar blues from Chicago. That's my kind of favourite, but um, lots of music I like. Um, and Raoul says he hopes I had time to answer my question because that would be nice. Asher writes, hello, Mr. Rosen, my question for you is, did you have a favorite author when you were a child? If so, who? Well, my favorite authors who wrote lots of books, there was a lady called Rosemary Sutcliffe and another one called Geoffrey Treese and a Canadian author called Ernest Thompson Seton. And they were my favorite authors, but my favorite book was a German book called Emil and the Detectives by Erich Kessner. And that was my favorite, favorite book. Okay, well, thank you, Asher. Shout out to Mina from her dad, Andrew Barron, who's uh, given us his Twitter address. Uh, do you want me to say that, Andrew? It's called at Sketchy Dad. Well, thank you, Andrew. Me and my daughter are big fans. We often read your poems or watch them on YouTube. I've written the poem below based on some of the sentences I found myself saying to my daughter, especially when she was very young. He says, he says of them, Andrew, that they're ridiculous. So here's things that he says, ridiculous things you've made me say, Mina. Are you eating ice cream with a crayon? Don't stab the Christmas tree with that horse. <laughs> no, you can't eat the stairs. Take that sausage out of your hat. We can't comb our eyeballs, love. Bananas aren't for that. Why are you shouting at the dog's legs? Great lines, I love that, that's really good. Thank you, Andrew, thank you for those. And I'm sure Mina must, did Mina find those funny? Well, I think we did, didn't we? Do we like those? Did you like that, Matt? Yeah, Matt's nodding, a lot of nodding there. What about you, Dave, did you like those? Yep, yeah, Dave liked it. Laura, did you like that? Yeah, yeah, no, we all like that. Well done, Andrew, that's four of us in here. Timur, also known as Twister TH or Mr. Twister says, hello, Michael Rosen, good to see you live streaming again, sir. Yeah, you may or may not remember me as that guy named Timur who listens to your poems and public speeches at his office job. 
<laughs> anyway, <laughs> I wonder what that means. I think he means he's supposed to be at work, but he's watching this instead of being at work. Do you have fun memories of filming a TV programme called Reading Aloud? Yes, that was a long time ago. Were you in it or something? I love this show and the atmosphere, you say, bringing your audience. I bet watching you riding a boat or hanging out in interesting places would make some funny or memorable moments. Well, funnily enough, TV are not knocking on my door saying, please make a TV programme. Please travel all around the world and uh, we'll film you. They, they don't ask me. I, I don't know why. If ever you get an opportunity, would you create a biographical comic book series about yourself? What a great idea. We've got a comic book based on that footballer, Zlatan Ibrahimovic. He, 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 he brought it out in France, so it's in French, and it's just called Zlatan. And it's all about sort of Zlatan's life and all the different languages and all the tricks he gets up to on the field. And it's really, really good. But um, I'm not as famous as Zlatan Ibrahimovic, so I don't think anyone's going to be creating a whole comic book series all about me. But he says it would be interesting to see adaptations of your poems and your life moments with you portrayed as a cartoony comic book character. Hey, you know, I'm beginning to like this. I, I don't know if somebody wants to do that. That would be great. It'd be a comic book. There'd be hot food, you know. There'd be the family all sitting around and going, whoo, whoo, and all that sort of stuff. Or the go-kart, you know, the one where I came zooming down the hill and I broke my front tooth. You can see that one on our YouTube channel. Yeah. And, uh, well, as it happens, now I think about it, Your Thinking About Tomatoes is this book I wrote. And you're going to be able to see me telling all that up here on the channel fairly soon. And I've approached someone and we're going to make it into da -da 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 -da, a graphic novel. Yeah. God, that sounds so that sounds so great. A graphic novel. Yeah, we are. And and we've already he's already started doing some of the drawings. I think we're going to crowdfund it and then uh, you'll be able to see that. But if that works, maybe what do you think, Laura? Do you think it's a good idea this that, that Tim has had that that we can we could do sort of like comic series based on my poems and my life and stuff. And maybe the guy who does the Tomatoes graphic novel, he could do that. Why not? Yeah, we could show it here, couldn't we? Yeah. Dave's concentrating. He's not listening. Never mind. OK. Now what have we got? Some more jokes. Oh, well, here's one from my own joke book. Have you got a picture of that one, Dave? You're showing the joke book? Yeah. OK. So here's one. Um, a man walks into this cafe. It was a Greek cafe. He said, this is fun. Yes, yeah, it's really fun. The chef has a very good sense of hummus. Oh, no, not that way. Never mind. OK, what's brown and sticky? Oh, is that, is that, that's a bad joke, is it? Yeah. Oh, no, it's a stick. Yeah. Do you like that one? Brown and sticky? Yeah. What else have we got? Why did the fly fly? Because the spider, spider. You get that? Spied her. Spider. Yeah, no. Um, how does Darth Vader like his toast? Hmm? On the dark side. And what do you get if you cross an ape and a prawn? A shrimpanzee. Hmm. And what do you call a nose with no body? Nobody knows. <laughs> yeah, you see that? Nobody knows. Anyway, never mind. OK. And then from Abby, uh, who's Mrs. Coombs, can you give year four at St. Aidan's in Croydon a shout out? I most certainly can. Hello, year four at St. Aidan's. We're currently studying poetry using the CLPE unit all about you. Well, that's good. Their favourite poem is No Breathing in Class. No breathing. We've got a few kids who could give you a run for your money performing it. I bet you can. Well, that's wonderful if you are having fun performing my poems and then you can make up your own and perform them because that's what's fun. You see, you use your arms, you use your face, you use your voice. What I sometimes think, you see, when you've got a band, you've got a guitar, maybe a keyboard, and some drums and a singer. All right. Well, when you are performing a poem, you've got instruments. And here's one and here's another. And then there's your voice that could be high or low. You could talk very quickly or you can talk slowly or you can talk like a mixture. One minute you could go quick, another minute you could go rather slow and you go up and down. So you've got these things. And then when you're doing a poem, it's got a bit of a rhythm. You can feel the pulse of the poem with your body. You see like that down behind the dustbin. I met a dog called Sid. He said he didn't know me, but I'm pretty sure he did. Exactly. 
So you feel the pulse in your body. So it's like an instrument. That's a bit like the drum in a band and you're doing it visually, doing it so you can see the rhythm. It's amazing. How can you see a rhythm? You can, like this. Yeah? You see, that's the magic of performing poems. So it's lovely that you perform mine, but have a go at performing your own, yeah? James Pete has been a big fan for ages and he says, hello, Michael. I'd like it if you could say my name. No, I don't think I will, no. Oh no, I have. Uh, and here's a joke I have for you. What's a pirate's favorite subject? Art. <laughs> did I do that right? Did I do all right? James Pete uh, said your name. Corvus from Germany has sent in some jokes. What do you call an alligator in a vest? Hmm? Any ideas? What do you call an alligator, Dave? Any idea? What do you call an alligator in a vest? No? An investigator, Dave. Get it? Alligator in a vest. Yeah? Yeah, no, Dave liked that one. He did. What do you call a fish without an eye? Fish. It's got no eye. Do you see that? You see? Fish. Here's a slightly longer joke. Near the end of a long, busy school day, all the students in Marvin's class wanted nothing more than to go home. All right, then, the teacher said, whoever can answer the next question correctly is free to go. Very excited. Marvin already began packing his stuff up. Uh, now, hold there, hold it there, hold it there. Who's packing their bag early, the teacher asked. I am, Marvin said, and went straight out the door. Hmm. Shout out to Nathan. He and his friends are big fans of your work. Hello, Nathan. I was wondering if you could give me an address for me to send a photo to get signed by you if possible. Well, Nathan, um, I do. I have a little card that I do send out. There's a photograph of me. Um, you'll have to find somehow or other, somewhere. I can't put out my address just like that. But um, you might find a way to write to me uh, if you go to my website, michaelrosen, or one word, dot co, dot uk, in the top corner, it tells you how to get in touch with me. And if you write there, I could maybe uh, send you a photograph of me uh, signed. I can sign it. Um, so there we are. Stephen writes, I'm really a big fan of your poems and stories. I've always wanted to ask you something. Whatever happened to your brother Brian and your friends Mart and Harry Bow? Well, I don't know whether you were watching earlier, but I told you about Harry Bow. Now, my friend Mart, my great friend Mart, he, he studied rocks. Yeah, yeah, I, he did. He studied rocks. And do you know what he became? He became the professor of geology at the University of Chicago in Illinois. And he is the world expert. All right, look, here is the earth. Luckily, um, Laura's given me some satsumas. So look, here's the earth. Now, you know, like you think you're standing on firm ground on the Earth. Well, in fact, the surface of the Earth moves a little bit. And if you think about it, there's big land bits and there's a lot of sea. Well, imagine it was like a piece of toast floating in a bowl of soup. The toast moves and that's what happens to the big land masses of Eurasia, of the Americas, uh, of Australasia and so on. They move. And you know what that's called? Tectonic plates. They move like this round the world. So it's like they're like bits of toast in your soup. And the world expert on that is Mart. Martin Flower. Look him up. That's his name. And he's the world expert on tectonic plates moving. Uh, my brother Brian, my brother Brian, worked all his life has worked all his life at the Natural History Museum in London. That's not the same as the Natural History Museum in um, A Night in the Museum. That's in New York City. My brother, yeah, he's worked uh, in the Natural History Museum. And very soon, <laughs> look out for this, there's a new vid is going to go up all about my brother Brian working in the Natural History Museum. I'll just tell you this. He lives in a cave underneath the museum. He wears a leopard skin bikini. All right, he's got a big club. <laughs> So it's all about my brother Brian. He's, a, he's a, an expert on fossils. Do you know what a fossil is? It's an animal that got turned to stone. And, and my brother's a fossil. Uh, sorry. My brother looks after fossils at the Natural History Museum. And, and I've got a whole new video that's going to come out. You'll be able to see that on the channel fairly soon. And I've got to give a shout out. 
for Stephen's sister, Stephanie. Hi, Stephanie. Sam wants to say thank you for being a poet and a writer and being a big part of my childhood. Here's a joke. I once saw a magician, a Mexican magician. He claimed he could teleport. He announced to the crowd, on the count of three, I will disappear. And he began to count down. Uno, dos. Seemingly out of nowhere, there was a flash and a cloud of smoke. And when it cleared, the magician was nowhere to be seen. He had disappeared without a trace. Uno, dos, tres. Yeah, How that? that's good. Do you like that one, Dave? You did. Now, Dave liked that. He big thumbs up from Dave. You can't hear Dave, but I promise you he is there. And we've got more news. I have started a new monthly newsletter. Yes, and you can get it via my website. You ready for the website again? Michael Rosen. Remember Michael, by the way, spelled A-E-L at the end. All right, as if it's Michael. Yes, I would say. So Michael Rosen dot co dot uk now if you go to the home page of my website and fill in the box with your email address if you'd like to receive the newsletter it might be useful for some of you teachers and grown-ups who are watching you'll be updated on any news new books my live appearances and shows you'll get that on a newsletter yes have we got the home page up there dave very good thank you very much so there we are harrison writes first and foremost can you do your hot food poem nice I'm sure you've already been asked a lot to do that, so no, so sorry. Um, maybe we've done enough of that. Should we? Maybe we've done enough noise. What do you, I think we probably have, haven't we? Yeah. And uh, have you ever visited Australia? And if so, what are your thoughts of it? Yes, yes, I've visited Australia several times. And way back in 1987 to 88, uh, I was there in Australia for something like seven or eight months, I think. So we were in Perth, and then. Uh, Melbourne, Melbourne, and we went to Aubrey Wodonga and a bit in Sydney. So, yeah, I just thought it's amazing. It's a wonderful place. Cottesloe Beach in Perth, one of the nicest, most beautiful places I think I've ever been. Uh, Margaret River, south of Perth, that was absolutely wonderful. In fact, if you look in my book, uh, You Wait Till I'm Older Than You, there's a whole story about being in Australia. And if you look on my YouTube channel, Yes, if you look right here and look up Australia, there's the whole story of what happened to us in Australia. Eddie, he trod on a scorpion and I said, they don't have scorpions in Australia. He said, dad, it's a scorpion. I said, they don't have scorpions in Australia. He said, dad, it's a scorpion. I went over there and I said, stand back everybody. That is a scorpion, <laughs> exactly. Oh yeah, and I got to know about um, all sorts of things. What were they, blue tongues. There was a blue tongue in the shower in this outside shower, sitting there going, ah. So yeah, I learned a lot of things in Australia. I absolutely loved it. How did you learn that famous thing you do in the poem? The pop sound. P.S. I can do it too. That's from the SOS. One more time. Okay. You, you kind of make a little thing like you're pulling your lips in. And you do it as hard, tightly as you can. And then you open your mouth as quickly as you can, trying to leave your tongue on the roof of your mouth. One more time. That was quite a good one, actually, wasn't it? Yeah. So that's how you do it. There you go. Um, and you can do it as well, SOS. That's lovely. Ariesto says, you are my favorite book. No, book writer. Sorry, I didn't read that right. You're my favorite book writer since I was a young lad. I wonder how old you are now, Ariesto. Uh, how do you feel about writing books? I love it. I mean, it's what a treat. Sometimes it feels a bit of a challenge, you know, like, you know, when you see a hill and you think, oh, I'd love to see the view from the top of the hill. In London here, we've got a place, uh, it's called Primrose Hill. And you, you think, oh, I want to look out all over London. Another one at a place called Alexandra Palace. And you think, oh, I'd love to go up there and see the view over London. And then you think it's a bit of a challenge because, you know, you've got to climb up there and, and so on. So you climb and you climb and you climb and the view is fantastic. It's a bit like that writing. You sort of know that you've got to put one step after another, uh, uh, but you know that when you get there and it's done, it's fantastic and it's amazing. And you have a view, don't you? When you write a book, you can look back at what you've written. You know, this book that I was talking about earlier, Uncle Gob and the Plot Plot. You see that? That was a, a book that was a sort of bit of a challenge to write. Uh, it begins, chapter one, the middle of the night. It was the middle of the night. 
If you've read what this chapter is called, The Middle of the Night, you already know that it was The Middle of the Night. If you didn't read what this chapter is called, you would have missed that it was called The Middle of the Night. No worries, because now you do know that it was The Middle of the Night. It's an interesting opening to a book. So uh, that was like the first step. Every journey begins with one small step. Um, so it's a bit like that. So I hope that answers your question. Uh, what's the first impression do you have when you're making a book? That depends. It might be like a little idea, something. I was thinking just the other day about a man and a woman. I saw they were in France and they were, they'd made lots of moving people in the garden so that when the wind blew, the people moved. Uh, it's what you call automata. I thought that's an idea for a story there about a couple who make automata. Would it, would, do they make automata because maybe they haven't got children? Or do they make automata because they've got children? And then what would be this plot of the story? Maybe the automata would take over the house. Anyway, this, that's how it feels like when you start writing a story. And what makes you stay writing for young children? Well, when I visit schools and libraries and book festivals, people seem to like what I write. So that's how it works. Ferb Cubed has sent in a joke. Why don't people eat clocks? Hmm? Why don't people eat clocks? It's very time consuming. And Raphael, 16 years old and from Austria. Guten Tag, Raphael. When I was about 13, 13, I think. I found your poems on YouTube and they sort of impressed me. Thank you. That time I wasn't really good in English. Well, you certainly are now, Raphael. Sehr gut, Raphael. So my school report told me that. And German, you say, is my native language. Du sprichst Deutsch, ich denke ich. Still, I started watching your YouTube videos and I pretty much learnt English through them. Oh, wow. Raphael, that's amazing that you learn English by watching my vids. I just want to say thanks for your wonderful work. Well, danke schön. Danke schön, Raphael. And bitte schön as well, because you're thanking me. You know, in German, those folks who don't read German, you know, we say thank you very much, and the other person says you're welcome. Well, in German, you say danke schön, and the other person says bitte schön, or just bitte. So we have different ways of saying you're welcome. In French, you might say merci beaucoup, and the other person might say pas de quoi which means sort of, it was nothing. I've got some piece of advice. Thank you, Raphael. What is your advice? Never stop eating hot food. Well, actually, it was my dad who ate the hot food, wasn't it? Uh, I'm not the biggest comedian, you say, but here's a joke for you. Found in a heap of recycled files donated to our school was this curiously labelled folder. Excuses I have used. Yeah, that's good. Hi, Michael, I write from Italy. Wow, these people, you come from Australia, so I have to say to you, buongiorno. After knowing you for the memes, I watch some of your poems and I love them. Grazia, molte grazia. So this is from Michele Mozena. I think it's how you say your name, maybe. I think it was one S, it's Mozena. Looking across, Laura, she speaks Italian. I especially love the Nasty series. Well, thank you, grazie again. I wish that book was translated in Italian. Well, because I would have loved it as a kid. If ever I have kids, I will totally read it to them. Well, Michele, I think in my pile of books here, it just so happens, look what I've got. I think I've got a book that's been translated into Italian. Look, I don't know whether you can see this there, Dave. Look, attenti al cane. I think that means in Italian something like, look out, there's a dog. Is that, is that what it means, Laura, do you know? Attenti al cane, or maybe beware the dog. Ah, maybe it's what you put up and say, yeah. Attenti al cane. And then it says, quale bambino non desidera un cane con qui giocare? Ma un cane non è come un peluche, non è da tutti saperseni prendere cura. Parola di strudel. So the, do the dog's called strudel. I love it. So there, that's one's in Italian. And then that one in English is choosing crumble. 
And so in Italian, they've called it choosing strudel. I love it. I love apple strudel. I love, oh, back with you in Austria, Austria. Apfel strudel, sehr gut. So this one is called Le Prodigiose Puzzette di Pesce Batuffolo. And that in f English is called Fluff the Farting Fish. So I don't know, my Italian is not good. It's something like, the. I think that means the prodigious farter of the fish who's called batuffolo. So there, and that says, Che cosa fareste al posto di Elvira? Se invece del cucciolo tanto desiderato vi regalassero un insulso pesce rosso. So there's a, a lovely, two books translated into Italian. Well, I'm really very lucky. When I saw that come through the post, I thought that's wonderful. Illustr Let's see if I can say this. Illustrazioni di Tony Ross. Illustrazioni di Tony Ross. So there, so I hope that's all right for you, Michele. Uh, so you could look out for those. They're published by Feltrinelli Kids. Thank you, the Bambini, the kids. Now, who's this from? Is this still Michele? Uh, I think it is. Um, so, Jace, Jace now we've got. Jace has emailed a joke. What do you call a train loaded with toffee? A choo-choo train. And can you read out my YouTube name? It's the train guy 19. Well, it would be, wouldn't it? Mind you, you could call yourself the choo-choo train, couldn't you? Well, that's nice, Jace. Thank you. And Joel writes, I saw your video about the stream today and I instantly had a question bubbling away in my mind. Do you know, I like that idea that inside your mind it's bubbling. That's what's called a metaphor, isn't it? Because ideas don't really bubble, but we think of images to explain things and that's great. So in your mind, bloop, 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 bloop. can you make that noise? Bloop, 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 bloop. You could write a poem about something boiling or bubbling sounds and the chorus or the noise you make underneath it could be bloop, 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 and that would be the rhythm. Or one of, group of you could go bloop, bloop, and the other group could be going bloop, 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 and you could make a little kind of bubbly chorus. And then you could make up a poem over the top about, I don't know, about boiling some water to make a cup of tea. That way you can make things interesting, you see, just by using the rhythm that you can make with the sounds you make. So, Joel says, as a small kid, and still today, I love the show, Thomas the Tank Engine and Friends. Do you know who the name of the person who first did the voice for Thomas Tank Engine? Ringo Starr of the Beatles. Oh yes, Ringo Starr. I used to be in the Beatles. I think I had some very important messages. I think it has some very important messages behind most of the episodes and the model work in the classic series is just mind boggling to me, says Joel. Uh, and I wanted to ask you if you liked the show growing up as well. Joel, I'm 72. That show didn't start appearing until I was about 50. So I wasn't still growing up then, Joel. So, but I read the books when I was a boy because the very first of the Thomas the Tank Engine books came out, I think, in 1949. You can check on Wiki for that, see whether I've remembered that properly. They're written by the Reverend Audrey. What was his first name? James, William, anyone remember? Anyway, his, name, his last name is Audrey. And you know, I met him. He was 95 and I met him at a book fair. Okay, so I met Mr. Reverend Audrey. He was a, he was a vicar, he was a ch church minister. And I met him and uh, yeah, when I was a kiddie, I loved it. And you know, I can still remember that picture when the engine is bricked up in the tunnel and you can just see the engine peeping out wanting to come out. And I thought that was so scary when I was about five or six. Pictures from books when you're very young, they last all your life. And I can still see it. It wasn't Thomas who was bricked up. Anyone remember the name of the, the engine who was, no, was it Henry? Maybe. Maybe somebody watching will remember. Maybe you're shouting it out and I can't hear. Or maybe it'll come up on Super Chat. Yes, if you know the name of the engine who was bricked up in the tunnel, right, in Thomas the Tank Engine, you send it to me on Super Chat and uh, I'll tell it in a bit later. So uh, here's a little joke. It says, Joel, how do locomotives hear? Through the engineers. 
Now, maybe Joel is American because the train driver in American is called the engineer. Do you remember Casey Jones? Casey Jones, riding on his engine. Well, Casey Jones, so he, we call them in England the train driver, but in America they call them the engineer. And it is a great name to call them because a train driver of those old engines and even the modern ones, they were engineers, people who knew how to mend the engine. So that's great. Let's have a look. Uh, is anyone? Ah, yes, Emperor Eku, you were there. Very good. Who was bricked up in the tunnel? Henry. Thank you. Well done, Emperor Eku. If you want to leave me, Emperor Eku, your address, uh, if you go to the top corner of michaelrosen.co.uk, all right, if you say, leave me your address, I might be able to send you a little something as a reward for knowing that it was Henry. Um, and also you, Umi Sonada, Sonoda, you were there, and I think someone else was there before, but it's gone through the Super Chat. Anyway, don't worry. Uh, we'll see how we get on. So, a question from Isaac, age 10. I was trying to write a story and can't work out what to do. Can you help? Yes, Isaac. Is there a story that you like? So maybe you like Harry Potter, or maybe you like one of the David Walliam stories. So you read that story, and then read it again, and read it again. And now think about that story and think, well, what if I changed the place that it goes on? So let's say it's Harry Potter, and Harry Potter, we know, its main places it goes on are two places, a home in the real world, and then he travels on a train, doesn't he, and he goes to Hogwarts. Well, what if you changed that and made that so... Maybe it's all about aliens. So let's forget it's about Harry Potter and all them. So you've got three aliens, and one of them's called, you could maybe make the name begin with H, and the other one begin with H-E, that's a minor, yeah. And what's the other one called? Is he called Ron? No, that was the actor, wasn't it? No, he is called Ron. Yeah, that's it. So you've got Ron, Hermione, and Harry. So you've got to change their names, so you're going to make them into aliens. And instead of it being home and a train and Hogwarts, why don't you make it one planet and then a trip on a spaceship to another planet? And they have to go to this other planet in order to learn how to be aliens. They've got to improve being aliens or something like that. Or they've got to be super wizards to run the whole universe. Ah, yes, now we've got it going. Super wizards or maybe masters of the universe. It's a school for master. Yeah, I'm making this up as I go along. You, you have them. It's a school to become a master of the universe. And it's on another planet. So there's planet X and planet Y. Give them other names. One's called Zeltoid and the other one's called... Uh, Exolobulus. So there's planet Exolobulus and there's planet Zeltoid and they travel on this spaceship from one to the other and when they get there they've got a school for masters of the universe. So now you haven't really had to work very hard you've just taken the Harry Potter idea you see and then started making up a new story. Well you can do that with any story, any poem, whatever and you just start with what's there and you start changing it around. You change what's called the setting or you change the characters, you change the time frame, that's when it happens. It could be in the future, go back in the past. It could be a story set in Roman times or in ancient Greek times or in ancient Egypt. You see, you can just change it. So any story that you like, change it. That's one way to write. And if you watch Hollywood films, do you know they're nearly all made up of old stories? Or maybe you like... Ancient Greek myths, they're really good for making into stories about real people now. Yeah, you could take a story like Icarus and Daedalus and really it's about people who wanted to fly to the moon. You see, because in that story they, they fly to the sun and their wings melt, the wax on their wings melt. Well, you could make up something like that. But instead it's in a space rocket like Apollo. You see, so that's how you can live in the world of story and make up new stories. I hope that that helps you, Isaac. Terotto sent a joke. I was in Nando's having an argument with my friend. Then my other friend grabbed the plate of garlic bread and ran off with it. I wish he'd stopped taking sides. <laughs> that's good. Really good. I like that. I wish he had stopped taking sides. Yeah, you could even do that a bit more. Were you having an argument? Oh, it's the other friend. Yeah, no, it's good. I wish he had stopped taking sides. I love seeing how jokes are made because that's you have to make a joke. You have to sort of like carve it. Alex said, you should read the entire 
Wuthering Heights in your signature style. <laughs> I think that'd be pretty hard, Alex. Wuthering Heights is about 700 pages long. Someone check that. Okay, there we are. I'll look up, see how many pages Wuthering Heights is. I'll look on Super Chat for that. And that's by one of the Brontes, isn't it? It's by Emily Bronte, I think. All right, and read it in my style. Well, I couldn't really, because a lot of it is in very strong Yorkshire accent. And uh, I'm not very good at a Yorkshire accent. I sort of just about get by with it. Um, how could I do it in my own signature style? Mm, nice idea, Alex. I don't think I'll be doing that. Nathan, your poems and stories are an inspiration to me and many others. That's very kind of you. It was my birthday on the 23rd. I just performing it. I was just performing in a play called Little Women, published, performed, sorry, I'm not reading this properly, by the Centenary Theatre Company in Warrington. That's fantastic, Nathan. Well done, matey. Little Women, that's that uh, lovely book by Louisa Alcott. Yep. And here's one more poem for the dustbin collection. Down behind the dustbin, I met a dog called Pat. Its bark sounded like a meow, so I thought it was a cat. You've got it. Right, now then, what have we got? These are all for bear hunt. So Mrs. Becky Waters, who's the head teacher at Dogsthorpe Infant School in Peterborough says, we would love you to give us a shout out on the 24th as we named one of our uh, EYFS classes, that's early years classes, after me. There's a Rosen class. Yes, go Rosen class. And we love, we're going on a bear hunt. So if you could read this to them, we'll do a little bit of it. Choo -choo, choo -choo, choo -choo, choo -choo. Chum, chum. We're going on a bear hunt. We're going to catch a big one. What a beautiful day. We're not scared. Uh-oh. Grass. Long wavy grass. We can't go over it. We can't go under it. Oh, no. We got to go through it. You can do it with me. Shoo, 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 shoo. We're going on a bear hunt. We're going to catch a big one. What a beautiful day. We're not scared. Uh-oh. Water. Very deep, cold water. Or even a river. A river. A very deep, cold river. We can't go over it. We can't go under it. Oh, no. We've got to go through it. Dive in, splosh, ah, oh, it's so cold. Quick, start swimming, brush tug, crawl, ka-chung, 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 ka-chung. How about butterfly? Wee, 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 chum, 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 chum. There we are, there's a bit of bear hunt. I hope you enjoyed that. Very good. Emily Maguire, who's the year one teacher at Pike Mere Primary School. Big shout out for year one. Pikemere Primary School in Cheshire. I'm coming to Chester, you know, I think next, very soon anyway. My year one class are huge fans. We love Bear Hunt. I'm trying to encourage them to read poetry for pleasure. I'm planning to show them your retellings of poetry. That's all you have to do. Press the button and show it and see whether they like it. Maybe start with chocolate cake. And they love me telling Bear Hunt. Well, that's very kind. Year one, I hope you're having a nice time. And they say they love my facial expressions. I have no idea what you mean. And any time they can just be silly. That's lovely. And also the Grove School in Berwick-upon-Tweed. I've, I've been to Berwick several times, you know. We're a special school. And last term had our classroom turned into a sensory story. Oh, I love that. So you could go about the room. You could feel the forest. And then you could the water. What about the mud? Sticky mud. Ugh. Yeah, we're going on a bear hunt. The children walk through the classroom and stop to every part of your story. Thick, oozy mud was one of the favourites. Well, it would be. <laughs> you know when you get your boots stuck in the mud and you pull it out? <laughs> That's it. And then you might fall over into it. <laughs> and then you pick up your hand. Yeah. Yeah. And you have to get rid of the mud. Yeah. And that came from Amanda Williams, who's the class teacher. That's lovely. And Carol Campbell says, please shout out to her two grandchildren, Bobby Campbell and Bluebell Campbell. And we've done that. And Bobby is reading uh, the poems in Poems A to Z. That was a collection I put together when I was the children's laureate. And I tried to put in all the poets who are performing in schools in England and Scotland, Wales and Northern Ireland. Uh, tried to put in all the poets who are performing in schools uh, at that time when I was the laureate, which was from 2007 to 2009. Bluebell, 
keeps reading my take on Aesop's Fables. Yes, I did a version of Aesop's Fables. Forgot to bring that book with me, didn't I? So Aesop's Fables, uh, and she loves the morals, as I did as a child, says Carol Campbell. They love my videos as well. Thanks very much, Carol. Shout out to Peak Class and Malala Class at Southgate Primary School. Southgate Primary School, I wonder if that's in Hackney. Might be, might it? Well, yes, I used to go past there. Is there Southgate Primary School? Huge fans of yours, especially everything to do with good old Eddie. Yeah, we often think about Eddie. He was very, very special. So many, many thanks. And that's from Chris McGiven, the year six teacher. Yeah. And here's a rap written by Shavonti Douglas in year six at West Hill Primary School, Wandsworth. And the poem of the rap is called Sunshine. Now, I'm not great at rapping, so you have to s sit with me, see whether I can manage it. People call me a fool, but at home I'm cool. I live with my dad, he's intense and mad. I like Barbie toys, is it good for boys? I stay up all night thinking how fun it would be in daylight. Now all I can do is dream, dream, dream. And that came from Eliza Bates. Nice little rap. I bet you, Eliza, you can do it about a hundred times better than me. And if you know anybody who can beatbox, you know, make a bit of a rhythm with their mouth, you know, that sort of thing. If they can do that, and then while they're doing that, you say your rap over the top of it. People call me a fool, but at home I'm cool. I live with my dad, he's intense and mad. That sort of thing. Do that, and it'll be much, much better than me. And well done, Shavonti Douglas, and kind regards, Eliza Bates. Louise Pierce at Marfield School in Cheshire has sent in some questions from her year three class. Which book took you the longest to write, says Corey? I think it was this one, because you can see it's quite fat. It's Uncle Gob and the Plot Plot, and I got some of it a bit wrong. You know, when you're writing a story, it's okay to get some of it a bit wrong. Chat about it with the person next to you, your talk buddy, as they say in America, the person next to you, your partner. Talk about it with your mum, your dad, your teacher, your brother, sister, cousin, whatever. And sometimes it can come right. And that's what I did. I talked about the bit that didn't work. I had the wrong person solving the problem. You know what some people say all stories are? Someone is stuck up a tree. And the job is, how do they get out the tree? And that's a story. Because a lot of stories begin with someone with a kind of a problem. The posh word for it is a predicament. That means something where you're a bit stuck. Yeah? And the job is, how do you get out of the tree? How do you get out of the situation you're in that isn't good? So do you get help? Do you do it all because you're a very clever person? Do you have a magic person to help you, a genie, a wizard, a whoever? Uh, maybe a magic animal, something like that. Is there somebody trying to stop you getting out of the tree? Is there someone trying to stop you getting out of it? Who and why? What's their motive from stopping? What's their motive for stopping you? That means what's their reason to make it hard for you to get out of the predicament, your character, you see? And that's a good way to start a story. Well, I had it going that this little boy, Malcolm, who's got this rather horrible uncle called Uncle Gob, and he was in the problem as to how to get rid of Uncle Gob. And I had it that the mum helped him. And I got stuck with it because it was better if I could find a way that Malcolm could get rid of Uncle Gob. Well, of course, much better if it's Malcolm. So I worked away at it like that. And it took me quite a long time. Thank you, Corey. You say, uh, do you have a special place where you write? Says Amelia, do you write with a special pen or pencil or do you type your stories? Mostly my stories and poems I do on the computer. Special place where I write? No, but I have got an office. I've got an office. Laura said we should make do some of our filming in the office, but I don't know whether maybe the people next door are making a noise. I don't know. We might do anyway. In fact, you can see a video that's up there uh, now from uh, Lit Film... Oh, I'm going to forget their name now. Lit Film Fest. Lit Film Fest. And you can see a bit of my office in that video. Um, when did you start writing books? My very first book, uh, Isabel and Hall Haller, came out in 1969. Wow, that's nearly 50 years ago. And it was a play called Backbone. And my first children's book came out in 1974. And that was called Mind Your Own Business. 
not a very sensible thing to call a book, is it? You know, when I brought that out, I heard somebody, they were going to my local library and saying, excuse me, can we have a book, please? And the librarian said, yeah, what book would you like? Mind your own business. Don't you be so rude, says the librarian. They said, it's not our fault. <laughs> it's what Michael Rosen called it, wasn't it? Hmm. Not quite sure why they went, hmm. But there you go. So uh, that was uh, the first book. Um, what's your favourite book that you've written? I can't, I can't have a favourite, Ethan and Matteo. I can't have a favourite book. The other ones wouldn't like it. You know, if I said, oh, this is my favourite, hooray, all the others would go, oh, no, no, that's not fair. No, love us, love us. No, 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 I love this one. No, that's not fair. So I, I can't choose a favourite, really. Have you always been an author and poet, says Jasmine and Paige? No. Um, I used to work for uh, the BBC. I used to make TV programmes and radio programmes a long, long time ago. And I still do a bit of that. And I also teach at a university called Goldsmiths. What's the best book you have ever read from Isaac and Ellie? I think it's a play by a man called William Shakespeare. And I love the plays, well, quite a few. What's my favorite? Maybe The Tempest, maybe King Lear. So I think that's probably my favorite. Though another one is a very old book called The Canterbury Tales by Geoffrey Chaucer. There are modern versions of it, one of them by a lady called Geraldine McCochran that you can get out the library. Who's your favourite character in your books? Says Amelia. Amelia, a favourite character in my books. A uh, cracker snacker in here. He's Malcolm's friend. And when Malcolm, sometimes things go what he says, fizzy. He's, he's trying to concentrate and then everything goes fizzy. And his friend Cracker Snacker is really kind and helps him. Yeah. What was your favourite toy as a child, says Mia and Connor. I had an old teddy that I used to chew. Not very nice, is it, really? But I was very fond of him and that's why I chewed him. Yes. Mm. Who or what inspired you to write? My mum, my dad and my brother. They were the main people who inspired me to write. They were both teachers. Can you imagine that? Having both, <laughs> both parents as teachers. You know, you're at school all day and you come home and your mum and dad, they're teachers and they say, what did you do in school today? And instead of like, you know, some mums and dads, they say, what did you do in school today? And then they get bored very quickly. My parents really meant it. They say, what did you do in school today? And I go, you know, stuff. And they go, what stuff? And I go, well, you know, sort of like history. History, that's really interesting. And I go, yeah, yeah, I can have my tea now. And they go, no, what sort of history were you doing? And I go, well, you know, stuff like, I don't know, it's quite old. Yeah, well, it would be because it's history. And it would go on and on like that. That's what it's like having parents as teachers. Mm. Uh, so they inspired me to write. They love poems. My mum used to walk around the house saying bits of poems. Tread softly because you tread on my dreams. Mum? Yeah. I was just saying a line from a poem and then my dad could do bits out of Shakespeare. Tomorrow and tomorrow and tomorrow creeps in this petty pace from day to day till the last record and things like that, you see. So I uh, had a lot of that. And then my brother used to imitate my dad. So in the bedroom, you know, my dad might have told me and my brother off going, never let me see you doing that again. And in the bedroom afterwards, after he's told us off, my brother shut the door and go, Never let me see you doing that again. You see, and, it, and that got me thinking, I could write things down that were imitating other people because I saw my brother do it. You see, I saw my brother do it and I thought, well, I could do that. And so it's the three of them who inspired me. Uh, yeah, so uh, that's from Corey, James, Imogen and Ryan. What do you do in your spare time? Well, yesterday, what did I do? It was Sunday afternoon. And at four o'clock, something was on the telly, but I was there. Do you know what it was? So that's Sunday, yesterday, four o'clock, and I was there. Let's see whether somebody can answer on Snapchat. So we'll have a look and see. So we'll see. Now, did, oh, I did ask some other questions, didn't I? I asked um, whether anyone knew, whether anybody knew how many pages there were in Wuthering Heights. Did anyone say? I don't think they've come up with that one. Anyway, we'll see. Um, OK, so I think I've answered that. And Liam says, I'm a big fan of yours, especially the poem Strict. That's why I wanted to ask you a special favour. I wanted to ask if you could say, hello, Liam Perella. And I'm going to guess 
you're in America, Liam, are you? Because you spell favor, F-A-V-O-R. Do you know how we spell favor over here? We spell it O-U-R. So there we are. Isn't that interesting? We spell words in different ways around the world. I wanted to ask if you could say, hello, Liam Perella, and I have, and I wanted to hear about how your brother Brian is doing. Well, my brother Brian, he's doing very well indeed, but my brother, he moved to South London. I live in North London. Yeah, so London, big place. Imagine it like a clock face like that. I live up here, my brother lives there. He moved to, moved to South London. I've, I've hardly seen him in 40 years. That's a joke. Um, yeah, no, I see my brother, but sometimes, you know, London is so big, it feels like so far to get across it. Yeah. Um, he wasn't all aged to go. Yeah, so I've just got to look and see whether there were any answers to those questions, wasn't there? What was the question? What was the question? What? No, anyway, here we go. So Timur, is he back again? Oh, I think Timur's back again. I wrote a silly poem in Russian where I asked myself, what is truly a wonderful gift for a birthday besides gadgets in nice boxes? And then I translated it into English and share it with you. It's a bit silly and cheesy, but I hope you like it and get a little gig out of it. And he says, my present, my present is the air that I always breathe. My present is my heart that keeps my rhythms beat. My present is the world that I discover and learn. My present are the nephews that I take care for. That is brilliant, Timur, also known as Tweezer TH from Russia. So he's written it in Russia, Timur, and then translated it into English. And it's this beautiful poem. And um, look, any of you watching, you could make up a poem like that. My present is. And you could talk about the things that are precious to you, that matter to you, like the nephews, Timur's nephews that he takes care for, but also things that matter because they keep you alive. Tim was thought about air and heart and world and nephews. And when you do that, when you look at it, the nephews become as precious as the world, as your heart, as the air. And you could go from things that start here and go out or things that are out there and come in. Yeah. So you can say my present is, whoops, my present is, my present is. I'm beginning to sound like like, what was that, m and &M. My name is, my name is, anyway, now I'm doing, my present is, but you could do that. It could be like a rap. My present is, my present is, and then you could do it. Well, Timo, that's wonderful. Oh, and you've got a PS to it. And it goes, my present is the air that I always breathe. No breathing. So it's a little tribute to me at the end. That's lovely. Billy O'Rourke. Have you ever been to Hull, says Charlie Dorbs. Yes, I have. I've been there twice. Uh, do a dad for us. Oh dear. If I do this, my son, I have a son called Emil, he will never talk to me. He thinks it's so embarrassing. Do I, do I really have to do it? I think maybe I better not. He, he, he'll stop talking to me, really, he really will. So I, I really can't, I'm sorry about that. Um, so, um, Let's have a look and see what else we got. Yeah, you're, you're asking for the dab. I'm I really down. I'd, I'd like, I want him to go on talking to me, you see. Um, and audiobooks for kids again says, we once had you as our subject in English. <laughs> That's good. I like that. The idea of geography, history, Michael Rosen, French, Latin. That's good. I like that. Good. Um, I wonder if Michael can rap my name is. No, I can't. <laughs> I'm not allowed to. Billy O'Rourke says, oh, right, yes. Thank you for answering my previous question last time you went live. I'd like to ask, what's your opinion of the most important aspect of writing stories? The most important aspect is that you have to make, as you're writing it, you've got to think of the person reading it and what's going to make them want to go on reading it. What are you doing? Are you making a mystery of something? Are you making it so that the person wonders who's a good person, who's a bad person in your story? Do they want to know whether, the, whether it's going to work out okay? So you've got to write into your story a way of making people want to read more. Get ready for the world's worst poem, says Billy O'Rourke. It's called Microwave. That's a good idea for a poem. What's going on with that big box sitting in the corner? All I wanted was for my lunch to get warmer. I'm standing before it, 
twiddling my fingers like the world's most anxious singer. What's it trying to tell me when it makes that beeping sound? Doesn't he like the pizza that I bought for a pound? Am I bothering it? Should I back away and leave it alone? Or is it in need of a friend and lonely on its own? Why not make friends with a bowl? Maybe it'll help it behave. Or maybe they won't got out. Ah, ruined the last line, do it once more. Why not make friends with a bowl? Maybe it'll help it behave. Or maybe they won't get on well with a microwave. Very good, Billy. Very, very good indeed. So I like that. But you see, you, you can make a poem about anything. A microwave. You walk past the microwave a hundred times and never think to make a poem. And then you think, a microwave? Could be quite mysterious. Maybe it's a person. Maybe the microwave can speak. Ah, yes. I am a microwave. Okay. And then you speak. What do I like doing? What do I don't like doing? Who am I jealous of? I'm jealous of the oven. The oven gets more to do than me. It isn't fair. You've got a poem. The Greeks class from Rendlesham Primary School love your performance poetry. We'd be excited if you could read out one of our poems. Thank you from Mrs. Howard, Mrs. Woodruff, Mrs. Harrison and all of the Greeks. Down behind the dustbin I met the class called Greeks. They were very pleased to see me as they'd been there for weeks. You got it. Can you hear children in the background? That's because we're on the top floor of a school. You might just be able to hear some children. Uh, what have we got next? Down behind the dustbin, I met the class called Greeks. They love poems by Michael Rosen and they thought he looked antique. <laughs> yeah, not the only one actually. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, it's really good. Down behind the dustbin, I met the class called Greeks. They don't eat many vegetables, but they're always munching leeks. Yeah. It's all working, isn't it? Down behind the dustbin, I'm at the class called Greeks. They look like normal children, except they all had beaks. Down behind the dustbin, I met the class called Greeks. They had long tails, big ears, whiskers, and only spoke in squeaks. Down behind the dustbin, I met the class called Greeks. They said I inspired them to perform poems aged five, seven, and six. It's a bit of a cheat, that one, isn't it? It's five, seven, and six. Yeah, down behind the dustbin, I met the class called Greeks. They're desperately hoping you read their poems as they love to hear you speak. Yes, nearly. Lovely, thank you. More poems from West Hill Primary School, a poem from Kai Mitchell. Uh, get in bed, get in bed, rest your head, say good night without a fright. The day has passed, the night has come, climb into bed and kiss your mum. High five your dad, be a good lad. It's past your bedtime, so close your eyes, wait for a surprise, but just dream, dream, dream. Tremendous, I love the rhythm to that. And now year six had a topic on World War II. Here's a poem by Maliha in year six at West Hill, Solution War. I found myself frozen on the spot to hear the distant gunshots. There is silence, the harmony has begun. The soldiers came, put their hands in the air, free. Shaking hand, a cheer came from the distant waves. This. Is a peaceful morning. Ah, it's the end of the war. Lovely. Friendship by Riverana, Year 6, at West Hill Primary. Side by side or miles apart, real friends are always close to the heart. Friends stuck like glue will never come apart. Some friends are loyal and smart. Friends are very generous and good at art. Friendship's like a precious flower, ready to bloom every hour. It must stop growing or keep on flowering, but you'll have it forever in capital letters i like that that's just like when you do comics and graphic novels you can use capital letters but you'll have it forever and now for a shout out to hearst class at the ifley academy class teacher marcus rush here says we did an impromptu lesson around the poem down behind the dustbin we'd love it if you could read some out down behind the dustbin i met a dog called mike he supported oxford united and i told him to take a hike oh well thank you that could be me couldn't it down behind the dustbin i met a dog called becky who sat behind the telly flat on her back, but she was very smelly. <laughs> Down behind the dustbin, I met a dog called Nelly. We're going to get belly again, I think. Down behind the dustbin, I met a dog called Nelly. I said hello and tickled her belly. Down behind the dustbin, I met a dog called Dodger. He wanted to come to my house to become my lodger. Down behind the dustbin, I met a dog called Ollie. He was very, very do that again. Down behind the dustbin, I met a dog called Ollie. He was being very silly in a shopping trolley. Down behind the dustbin, I met a dog called Jack, who had a black cat and sat on a cat. Down behind the dustbin, I met a dog called Ella. She was having a sleepover. 
with her friend called Bella. Down behind the dustbin, I met a dog called Taz. She was in a pretty dress, dancing to jazz. Do -do 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 -bop. Down the down behind the dustbin, I met a dog called Grace. She was eating chocolate cake and it was all over her face. Down behind the dustbin, I met a dog called Charlene. She was playing basketball and was really very keen. That's good. I love those. I'm writing it to you on behalf of our year five classes at Denton West End Primary School in Manchester. Your live chat has come at a perfect time as our current literacy topic is poetry. The children in 5B and 5L started this half term by analysing a range of your poetry and once we had a good understanding we each wrote our own poems based on my poem Bathroom Fiddler. Yes, well you can see Bathroom Fiddler on uh, our channel here and there's a few of them uh, there which we might have time to do, we'll see. Uh, and they've enjoyed the performing them. All right, so thank you very much for inspiring fun and engaging poetry, says Miss Barclay and Miss Longley. Nice to see you. And they're year five teachers at Denton West End Primary. And here's a bit more from uh, West End Primary. This one's by Aston in 5L. I'm the garden goon, the garden raccoon, the swiddler and the niddler, the eater and the cheater. I break and I fake, I chiddle and I diddle when it's time for me to play, when I know it's time to eat and break. When I walk out the door to go and play, I don't play straight away, I fiddle and I quiddle. I pick up the muddy, disgusting football and I place the ball where I want. I get the white and blood red coloured ball and I look up. I aim, I direct, I kick the ball with all my strength and might. It's rolling as fast as lightning, I hear a smash. Gulp! My mum heard! I grab the soggy melting mud, I grab my huge tub, I grab my bucket and collect the mud and splosh drops all the squishy gooey mud. I hear a plop in the tub. Hey! I'm having a mud bath! And that came from Aston. And that's a little bit like my bathroom fiddler. Any poem that you read or see or hear, you can take it and change it and make your own poem, just like Aston did. That's wonderful. And I've got some news. I've got some new editions of my books coming out. So a new edition. I've got my book of silly poems. Let's see whether we can find that somewhere. I think maybe Dave's going to put up a picture of it. And I've got it here. So as a new edition of that, my book of silly poems. That's got some poems in it, like, or some little jokes in there, like, do you remember this wonderful singer I used to love a lot, uh, Bob Marley? And he used to say, what does Bob Marley like in his donuts? How does he like donuts? When he eats donuts, how does he like them? Hmm? We're jamming, we're jamming, we hope you like jamming too. Do you know that song? No, never mind. Okay, so, um, so that's got, and some silly songs it's got in there. And then also we've got, um, Bar Humbug. Have I brought that in? No, you've got a picture. Oh, well, there it is. Look, a new edition of Bar Humbug. And that's a story based on the Scrooge story called Christmas Carol. A Christmas Carol. That's my version of that. And then I've also got my, some of you grown-ups might like that if you're watching it. This is my memoir. And it all oh, look, there's me. Can you see that? And it's called So They Call You Pisher. That's what the book's called. So if some of you grown-ups want to know where I came from and how I came to be writing and things that happened to me when I was a boy. This is the story of me from naught to 23 and also the life, a bit of quite a bit about my parents and some relatives of mine who, sad to say, died during the Second World War. So that tells that story. And then I've got a paperback edition of Jelly Boots and Smelly Boots. OK, and maybe we can go to a clip of that now. We're going to hear a little bit of Jelly Boots, Smelly Boots. Welly boots. Welly boots, smelly boots, fill them up with jelly boots. Welly boots, smelly boots, see them on the telly boots. Welly boots, smelly boots, now they're in my belly boots. This poem comes from Jelly Boots, Smelly Boots with wonderful pictures by David Taziman, published by Bloomsbury. Oh, and while I think about it, one of the songs that's in the book of silly songs there, the book of silly verse that I've got there, uh, what do I do with it? Anyway, this one there 
is that one that I sometimes do that goes, I had the German measles, I had them very bad. They wrapped me in a blanket and put me in a van. The road was very bumpy, I nearly tumbled out. When I got to hospital, I heard a baby shout, Mama, Papa, take me home. Take me from this rusty home. I've been here a year or two. Now I want to be home with you. Here comes Dr. Glanister sliding down the banister. Halfway down he ripped his pants and now he's doing a cha-cha dance. Da -da 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 Anyway, there we are, that's in there. Now, don't forget to check my website. I mentioned that to you before. That's, remember, michaelrosen.co.uk. That's all got all the latest stuff that I'm doing. Here's some dates that I've got lined up. Anyone who lives anywhere near Wimbledon in London, I'll be there on October the 7th, talking about Uncle Gob and doing some of my favorites and poems and stories. So I'd love to see you there in a great big tent on uh, Wimbledon Common, I think it is. So look out for that. It's called the Wimbledon Book Fest. So that's on October the 7th. On the 12th of November, I'm going to be in Chester. Yes, uh, it's in England as well. Some of you folks from America, I'm afraid. In England, it's gonna be at the Story House. Do you know that, the Story House? And that's part of the Children's Book Show. Perhaps you can see that there. Uh, there might be some room for you to squeeze in there. There's going to be lots and lots of children for that. And then I've got some other dates coming up. I'm going to be at the Old Vic Theatre in London, where I might be talking about Bar Humbug and also uh, Unexpected Twist. So the Old Vic. And I'm also going to be at the Royal Albert Hall. I'm not going to be in the main auditorium. I'm going to be in a, a, a big room to one side. And I'm going to be doing two shows at the Royal Albert Hall. So look on my events button. If you click on the events button on michaelrosen.co.uk and go to December, you'll see that I'm on in those two public venues. That's the Old Vic and the Royal Albert Hall. So look out for that. Can I say a big well done to Tottington Primary School for all their hard work. They've been writing and performing their own poems and are having their own film festival. Imagine that. Brilliant. So well done to all the pupils. Keep writing, keep performing, sending your poems in. Fantastic. Very, very good. And I think we're very nearly at the end, aren't we? So, uh, well, look, I hope you've enjoyed the show. Thank you so much to all of you who've sent in poems and letters and jokes and so on. I've tried to read out as many as possible. Uh, let's see whether there's any more on here that I can read out. Um, could I say hello to Casper and Myla? Yes, I've just said that it was just disappearing off the screen. Daunting Sky says, greetings to Mr. Rosen. And well, well look, we, we'll have to do another live stream, won't we? Because it's been good fun, isn't it? So I'm going to do one in the winter. So make sure you press the bell. Dun, 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 ding -a -ling -ing, and subscribe to the channel. If you subscribe to the channel, then you know exactly when I'll be doing these things, all right? Um, and uh, in the meantime, please do visit my website, latest news and details, what I'm doing, where I'm appearing next, Remember it again, Michael Rosen, all one word, dot co dot UK. And thank you very much, all of you on there. Thank you. Uh, how many pages makes a book and not a short story? I leave you with that question. That came from Zoe Zoleyena. What's the difference between a book and a short story? What's the difference? I don't know. <laughs>